Hey there, this is Igor. Right in front of me, I have these incredible vibrant burgers. Green, yellow and pink red. Honestly, I have never encountered or tried burgers like this before. Each one isn't just a feast for the eyes, but they all boast different tantalizing feelings. So I'm excited to share this journey of flavors and colors with you. Let's dive into the process and see how these beauties came to be. Let's go. All right, folks, today I have embarked on a truly exciting culinary journey and my aim to craft three distinct burgers each shining with its own bold color. A vivid green, a radiant yellow and a deep rich red color. Now, when I say color, I mean it in every sense. And we are not just talking about the fillings here, but also the buns. And yes, we are making those buns right from the scratch. I know it sounds like a tall order with all these ingredients laid out, but trust me, it is simpler than it looks. Don't let the long list intimidate you. And for those who want a quicker option, sure, there are store-bought shortcuts. But for me, there is an unmatched joy in creating each component by hand. So let's dive into this colorful challenge. Let's dive right into making our green burger bun. And here is what we're gonna need. 300 grams of white bread flour, 30 grams of sugar, 20 grams of unsalted butter, 6 grams of salt, 3.5 grams or 1 teaspoon of instant or active dried yeast, 1 medium sized egg, 100 milliliters of milk and roughly 50 milliliters of water. And let's not forget our star player that will give our buns that fantastic green color, spinach, about 100 grams of it. All right, first things first, mix the sugar into the warm milk and stir until dissolved. Then whisk in the egg, add the yeast and give it about 10 minutes to activate. If there is no action after that time, your yeast might be expired, time to grab a new batch. Now for the spinach, boil it briefly just for a few minutes until it wilts. After boiling, drain the water thoroughly. When it is cooled down a bit, blend it with 50 ml of water to get a vibrant green mixture. Once your yeast mixture is all bubbly and ready, it is mixer time. In its bowl, combine the yeast mixture, flour, butter, salt and the green spinach mix. Turn on the mixer and aim for a soft elastic dough. If things looks off, like the dough is too sticky and all over the place, you might have added too much liquid. No worries, just add flour little by little until it gets its act together. When the dough is good to go, sprinkle a bit of flour on a clean surface, then turn out the dough onto it. Shape the dough into a bowl and let it rest in a lightly oiled bowl. Give it a solid 45 minutes to rise preferably in a slightly warm oven. After the rice, bring out the dough, give it a gentle patch down, always a fun part, and let it take another 30 minute break. Again, the slightly warm oven works wonders here. And that's it. You have now got a green dough infused with spinach flavor and color all set and ready. Jumping into our next burger bun journey, we are on a mission for sunlit buns. Using the tried and true ingredients from previous dough, but remember, we need 100 ml of water this round. Let's infuse some color. Get water boiling, then whisk in 1 to 2 teaspoons of turmeric for that golden charm. Let it chill till it's warm about 41 C. Mix it with milk, sugar and egg. Once frosty, it's go time. Combine flour, butter, salt and our gold touched water. Let the mixer do its thing till the dough is silky and radiant. Shape the dough, let it rest in a cozy bowl for 45 minutes. After its rest, knock out the air, reshape and grant another 30 minute break. Boom! Golden buns in the making. Sun lit bites await. So stay tuned. As the yellow dough is off rising, let's get started on the final color, a deep vibrant red. We are keeping to our base recipe but with beetroot to give it that unique hue. You can boil your own beetroot but to save some time I thought it would be overkill. So I went ahead and just got pre-cooked beetroot. Blend to achieve a rich puree. Not only does this add a beautiful color but it also brings a some natural moisture. Because of this, we are cutting back the water to 70 ml instead of usual 100 ml. Mix the yeast with milk, sugar and eggs just like we did earlier. Then add the flour, butter, salt and our beetroot mix. When mixing the dough, if it is a bit sticky, lightly oil your hands to prevent any dough from clinging. Once combined, let the deep red dough rise for 45 minutes. Afterward, punch it down and fold. Let it rest for another 30 minutes and you will have yourself some beautiful ruby red dough. From dough to bun, we are on the home stretch of our vibrant trio. First, dust your table with a bit of flour then lay out your dough. And don't forget to knock out the air, just take a moment to marvel at these colors. It makes me wonder, maybe we could craft some colorful dumplings or pizza next? A little recommendation, invest in these specific rings, about 10 cm wide and 4 cm tall. They are a lifesaver if you are dreaming of plush soft buns. Without them, there is a risk of the dough just spreading out and morphing into something that is neither a bun nor a flatbread. Time to handle the dough. You will want 100 grams for each bun. 
Use a dough scraper to section them off, weight them and then shape them by tucking the edges underneath and rolling with the palm of your hand. I have decided to go with two buns per color, as for the leftover dough, straight to the freezer for another day of culinary magic. By the way, if you don't have these rings, you can easily fashion some out of foil. Pop the 100 dough balls into the greased rings, but a heads up, skip the plastic film over the top, you don't want to stun their growth. Instead, lightly coat them with oil to stop them from drying out. Let them rise and fluff up over 40 minutes. Meanwhile, get that oven heating to 170C. After they rise, brush them lightly with an egg wash. And remember, steer clear of getting any wash between the dough and metal. Sprinkle with sesame seeds while the wash is still wet. Into the oven they go for 25 minutes. A little baking secret. At around the 15 minute mark, give them a turn to ensure an evenly baked golden finish. Once the timer dings, cool them on a wire rack for about 5 minutes. Then gently release them from their rings. And there you go, vibrant buns that will turn your burgers into a culinary masterpiece. Alright folks, let's get our green burger feeling ready. First up, the aromatic pesto. Start by stripping those basil leaves from the stems and pop them in a food processor. Toss in some garlic, pine nuts and parmesan and blend it all up. Now about that lemon, the best hack, squeeze it through a sieve to avoid any seeds and unwanted sprays. Drizzle in some olive oil, add salt and pepper and give it one last whirl. Admire the beauty and take it in that heavenly aroma. Bellissimo! Now let's talk chicken. I am a Thai guy because they are juicier and pack more flavor. But if you are more into breasts, go for it. Lay them out, slice them for even cooking and maybe give the thicker part a little tap. Fry them up in some oil, season as you go and once they are golden, let them cool. Dice them up, mix them with that drool worthy pesto and BAM! You've got a chicken pesto mix that's seriously hard to resist. I won't lie, I snacked on half of it while preparing the rest. Can you blame me? Pesto love is real. Now we are all set to make that epic green burger shine. Rolling from our green magic, let's dive straight into the sunshine vibes of our next feeling, yellow. First up, grab a yellow pepper, ditch the stem, slice them in half and give the seeds the boot. Now here is the drill, slice them thin, then chop them up all nice and fine. And do the same thing with tomato. Cut in half horizontally and scoop out the pulp with the spoon. And finally chop it. And time to tackle the beef. Get a hot pan ready and press that ground beef down for a nice even sizzle. A couple of minutes in, flip it over and oh boy, that crispy golden crust. Now break it up into bits. Slide in those yellow wedges, season it up, give it a good stir, then sprinkle in all that glorious cheddar, I mean load it up. Stir until that cheese is melted into a stretchy beefy wonder. And BAM! We've got a beefy cheesy yellow dream ready to rock your taste buds. But don't drift off yet, our tricolored culinary quest has one more stop, the red filling. Onto our red filling. We are dealing with red bell peppers and ground beef. First off, we prep our peppers by getting rid of the stem and seeds, slice them up and send them for a quick roast in the oven. Once they are charred into a container they go to loosen up the skin. A little peel and chop later, they are ready for action. Now for the beef, it's the same drill as the yellow filling. Into the pan till it's nicely seared with a little salt and pepper for taste. Then we bring in the peppers, toss in some crushed tomatoes, a hint of chili pepper and a dash of smoked paprika. Stir it up till everything gets to know each other well in the pan and voila, our spicy red filling is all set to jazz up the red burger. Alright folks, it's taste test time, let's bite into the green bun first. Combo of chicken and pesto, absolute magic, absolute magic. Up next, the sun kissed yellow bun. That beef paired with the melt in your mouth cheddar, explosive flavors right there. Last, but definitely not least, the red bun. Mm. 
The roasted red pepper, sweetness and beef savory notes are wonderful, but whoa, these chili have quite a kick. Choosing a top pick is tough, but the yellow burger might have a slight edge for me. The crispy beef complemented by the creamy cheddar is just chef's kiss. On the prep front, sure it had its moments and multiple steps, but hey, it's about enjoying the process, right? In conclusion, using colors in cooking isn't merely for aesthetics, it genuinely enhances the flavor journey. Thanks for joining me on this culinary adventure. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out the next video, which should pop up around here. And engaging with these videos helps push my content to a broader audience and your support means everything. Catch you next time. Peace.